uh, again come to say hey, thank you. God, we thank you for uh, being good, allowing us to make it through this day this far, thus far. We come to study your word, God. We ask that you enlighten our hearts and our minds, encourage us and strengthen us, build us up where we're, we're torn down and give us strength when, in our weakness. Be our strength. Levi. We are all in all, God, and we thank you for all the things that you've given us, especially uh, eternal life and, and forgiveness of sins and families and all things. But God, most of all, we thank you for being our Savior. Yes. Yeah. Have your way now as, as we come to study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we've been studying First John and... Uh, Tonight, uh, we're going to go to the third book in 1 John, the epistle of 1 John. <clears throat> Chapter 3, and we're just going to start out with verse 1. Last time, I didn't get too much help with reading it, but if somebody feels like reading, I'd ask if somebody would read verse 1. Okay. I'm not there yet. Okay, take your time. It's all good. I'm getting it. <laughs> All right. This, these phones. First John what? Chapter three. Chapter three. Okay. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It wasn't me, and I ain't getting the blame on that one. Help, help her out. Help her out. <laughs> I know. That, that was not necessary. <laughs> Help her out, school. Oh, okay. All right. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said, I'm reading, school. No, that's not, that's not that's right. Not. Right, first, right first. train, wrong track. Man. First John, <laughs> right <down here. laughs> I'll, I'll read. <laughs> See how great a love the Father hath bestowed on us, that we would be called children of God, and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Amen. Thank you, Dee. Okay. And, and, um, right away, John uses a word that just like stands out. Behold. Behold. He comes out. He's preaching i like to think that he's preaching this word and he's saying behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god and he's simply identifying our position and telling us how we got our position it was it was by love and that it was bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god in other words when you become a a, a believer a christian uh you're now identified as a, a child of God. You're a son and daughter of God. And um, therefore, the world doesn't know us. And so this, 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 thing, this thing that we call salvation and how we become a child of God, John is talking about the spiritual aspect of it. That's why the world doesn't, uh, the worldly system doesn't recognize us because we're no longer a part of that system. They and, and what I mean is that um, we're changed. We're changed because you 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 uh, you're now saved, and and God bestowed His love upon us, and 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 therefore the world knows us not because it knew Him not. You always hear that, that, that we say He came to His own, and His own didn't know Him. He came to the world, and the world didn't didn't uh, know Him, didn't want to believe who He was, and didn't want to accept Him. Um, as Christians, as believers, it's a spiritual thing. Um, John always identified the deeper part, and that's why his gospel is so different because he recognized Thank you. who Jesus was and who Jesus is, and he wants us to recognize who we are. That's why we're different from the world. The little things that the world, like the world, doesn't like about us, it's because of the spirit that we have in us—the spirit of love, spirit of God. Okay. 
And he says, behold, that's a good thing. Behold, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. If somebody could read verse two and three. Behold, we are God's children now, and what we and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Okay. And again, and then he comes and he addresses, he addresses his beloved, beloved, beloved. Now, now, now we are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. We are children of God now. And the changes like I said before, are not so evident with the eye as much as it is in the inside. The change is the inward change, but that evidence shows outside because of the love. And, and that's how, uh, that's how uh, we know that we are of him. The, 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 the physical changes that we await are the coming of Christ, but but we know him that when he appears, we shall be like him. A transformation will result from seeing him as he is, but pending that event, it is already true that everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. In other words, what Paul is letting you know is that the spiritual change that has taken place inside purifies you and makes you like him and you will be just like him when he appears when we when we see him again we know that we're it's almost like um you're a finished product a product on the inside but as you're becoming finished you're still becoming you you but when you see him you will know that you will be just like him our hope is in him we know that one day we will see him face to face and the world doesn't understand that because that contact that 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 newness that 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 spiritual connection is what purifies us it's what makes us different what you, i remember here and i can't remember and i don't want to recall the whole thing but uh I can use this sample. When people see you go through things or see us as Christians go th through things and they say, what is it? What is it? How can they go through that? How can they bear up under that? That's because of the Christ that's in you. That's, that's what it is that keeps you. And even though you're not physically already at that point, you are perfect or complete inside. That perfection, that purification that, that, that Christ has already given you by bestowing the love, his love upon you, already purifies us and makes us pure. Because why? Because he is pure, not because we're pure. And that's what's, uh, that's the key. It's in him. It's all in him because of him. That's what makes us the uh, that way. And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. And that's what that means. As long as you're saved and being saved and shall be saved, you know that you are becoming. You're becoming this perfect product, e pro product uh, even though you're still becoming, even though you're, your outward man is not perfect. Your inward man, your inward woman, your, your soul is being perfected and you are perfect. You're just not 
at that level yet, that per perfect level when you shall see him face to face. Um, verse four, is it verse four? Verse four, five. <clears throat> oh, verse four and five. Verse four and five, if somebody will read. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgressions of the law. And we know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever okay. abided. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. You Which one did you stop at? Five. Okay. That's where I wanted you to stop. Okay. Okay. And whosoever committed sin transgresses the law, also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And we understand what the law is. The law uh, could not save us. The law was, was what showed us what sin is. And so whoever uh, breaks the law, sin is simply lawlessness. Sin mm -hmm. means that it's lawlessness. And we 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 were in that state uh before we were saved by by grace and who everyone who sins breaks the law does lawlessness in fact sin is lawlessness usually means wickedness and so this is where he's trying to identify or trying to make a point that the world system and the way the world th does things is wicked. It's lawless. It's wicked. The worldly system is wicked. We think of sin as the, the, the things that um, uh, we do, you know, like our transgressions and things that we, we, we bad thoughts or our lies or whatever. But the world system, the whole world that did not even like Jesus, it was wicked. It's wicked. It's evil. And so that's what he's talking about. He says, whoever does who, is, who does sin or is lawless does wicked things. And he's trying to, I don't want to get ahead of myself because he's trying to, to make a point and he's walking this thing slowly to, 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 to try and like show you the different aspects of it. This book or this particular chapter deals with a lot of contrast. And if you remember when we talked about the Psalms, it's almost like the Psalms where the Psalmist said blessed is the man that doesn't do this and does that and she shall be like this and he should he's like contrasting things as he's walking through this text and so he's showing you that you're saved you're different you're not like the world and it's not because of your uh goodness what was the word he says not because of how what you did but it's because that, that christ god bestowed it upon you saved us and that uh, people that don't do this they're wicked they're evil and so the system of the world is wicked it will eat you up if you don't uh follow the world system you know how it is you we try to teach our kids to tell them so that they don't make the same mistakes that we do or that you you try to save them from 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 heartache and pain we try to get people to get saved so that they don't go through the the uh the, the grinder of of the worldly system because even as children of god we know how hard it is how tough it is living day to day in the daily grind and you know the system is wicked and i can look at each and everybody here sitting down tonight they could tell you a story about how the world did them wrong how the system beat you down but it was only by the grace of god that you was able to maintain your sanity and continue on and it's because he bestowed that love in you find you and because his 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 spirit is in us that's how we're able to maintain it it's not by doing 20 flips or 1700 push-ups and and reading uh miles monroe book on how to overcome this and overcome that it's because of the grace of god it's because he he he, he holds us he keeps us and so whosoever committed sin transgressions also the law for sin is the transgression of the law uh and we know and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin and so when i looked at this this verse here i always like to say well what what uh 
the, the key word here, though, look at this word manifest. It's hard to explain when you look at it, but I'm going to try to explain this thing. He used this word particularly to get a point across. Wickedness. Wickedness. Is. Manifested. And wickedness is just a part of being wicked. People who are wicked or evil, the world system is just evil. Even though uh, some people know that it's wrong to be wrong, wrong. it's just, I, I want to be wrong. I just, I don't care. I'm going to do wrong. And if it hurts somebody, it doesn't matter to me. As long as I get my way and have what I have. But the Christian, it's not so much manifested because it is the love that is in us and the, 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 the bestowment of his grace upon us and in us. And I'm, I'm almost getting ahead of myself. The spirit, I'll just put it that way. The spirit that is in us that keeps a check and a balance on us, that helps us to understand, oh, wait a minute, that's wrong. Whereas evil folk, they just do evil. They just do wicked. They don't, they have no guilt for it. They don't, they don't care. And listen, this is where that word manifest. And we know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. He was revealed. He was, he was given to the world. He became, he was incarnate. And so his purpose was to what? To destroy the works of the devil. And so if you're in him and he was manifested, given by God to destroy the works of the devil, if you have him in you, then you have the same power to destroy the works of the devil. And so when evil and wickedness comes into your to you, I don't want to get ahead of myself because uh, he's going to go another way. And, and it's familiar that we relate to it when he goes there. I think it's in verse six. Maybe I can go just a little bit into it. Paul says, when I want to do good, what evil's always present. That that I don't want to do, I do. But for the believer, we have this Christ in us. And so when we want to do bad, the Holy Spirit helps us check and balance. So that you say, oh, man, Steve, you know that was wrong. You know that was wrong. Whereas the world, they don't have it. They just do evil. They don't even know. Half of them don't even know why they do evil. They just do it. And it's just not fair. It's not right. It, it's, it's, it's bound to keep certain people down. It does, it, it'll grind you. It'll just grind you. But, but, with, but, with, but with Christians, we have this other side to us. And it says, and it says, and, and he was manifested to what? To take away our sins. And in him is no sin. And so he's pure. There's no darkness in Jesus. There's no darkness in God. There's only light. And so even though um, we have this spirit where we are uh, not sinless, we have this bestowment of love and, and, and grace and mercy upon us that we have a different kind of spirit to us you know john said that god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and that's the aspect of john's gospel that's the aspect of john's epistle here it's the spiritual part it's the spiritual part okay and oh that's what i wanted i, I can't remember the verse but um i apologize if somebody gets it during the time you can read it if, if you if you know where it is but it says Jesus came to do what? To destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil is what? To kill, steal, and destroy. He's always coming up against us. 
And so Jesus was manifested in order to destroy the works of the devil because the devil's powerful. Okay, if somebody can read verses, we were stopped at verse uh, five, I believe. Six. We stopped at verse six. We started at six. We stopped at six. We're starting at six. Okay, read six, seven, and eight, please. Whosoever abideth of him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth, doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For the purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And so now he begins to, to show us these contrasts. He starts showing us this, these contrasts. And you find out and you see the difference between a believer and a non-believer. But we also see this power that works in us that makes us different whoso abideth in him sinneth not so we come he, he he deals with this thing that he's dealt with once before remember we talk about abiding in him he is divine and we are the branches he's talking about the same thing he that abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither know known him now here's the point and this is my belief if you don't believe as what I believe, or if you disagree with me, that's fine. I'm just telling you what I believe. And it's from my, my understanding of the readings that I have done, and this is what I believe. I'm not believing. I don't think that John is saying that believers don't sin. We know that we're sinners saved by grace. What I believe John is trying to get us to understand is that the world is wicked, and it has a system that is wicked. Believers are full of love. And so as you being full of love and the spirit of God, you are, are uh, you fall short at times, but you don't follow that spirit of wickedness. So for the believer, if you do something wrong, what do you do? You repent. You try to get rid of it. You try to get it straightened out. You go to the father and try to get it straightened out. Whereas the wicked person. They they do. They do bad things. Listen to what he says. Whosoever of abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. That's what I wanted you to see. That one right there. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. In other words, we do have, uh, fall short. The Bible tells us that. We know that. That's our nature. We were born that way. But because he indwells us and you do righteous things, you are you're righteous. Because God honors your righteous actions, your righteous deeds. The evil people don't do that. The world doesn't do that. And they don't care to do it. The Bible tells you that the, the stuff of God is foolishness to them. They can't even understand it because what? It even tells you it's spiritually discerned. And so that spirit that's in all of us, when you have the spirit of making sure to help your brother or your sister, or you have that spirit to try and make sure that if, if somebody is being treated unfairly and you speak up for them on their behalf, as I talked on Sunday, as an advocate, you're doing righteous things. And because God fills us and indwells us, we want to do righteous things. When when, when you uh, go amongst people who, who love one another, you can see the difference. When you go amongst people who are selfish, they, they just worry about themselves. They don't care about them, anybody but themselves. You can tell the difference. There's a spirit that even goes with that. I don't be around them because they, they have a fake kind of love. They sin. That's that's that sin that's in them. And you know what? Just like you can feel that sin, the devil can feel our righteousness. And so sorry. And so sorry. And so he's saying whosoever abides in him sinneth not that's not saying that we don't sin that's saying that we, we, we're, we're striving we're, we're trying to do righteous things we don't go out and say well how many bad things can i do today if i do something wrong i feel bad about that 
I hurt somebody. I should have. I should have helped that brother. I should have. I should have uh, helped that old lady across the the, the street. I should have gone to that. Oh, uh, uh, he used one example that uh, was was used by one writer is that we find our brother that's hungry, and you know the story. It says your brother come to you and say, "I need a loaf of bread. I'm hungry. Can you give me some food?" You tell him, "I'm gonna pray for you, brother, and go on to bed. And good night, and I'll see you in the morning." No, righteous people say, "Look, oh, you hungry? Let me help you get something to eat." Now, I know we get into things like being uh, spiritually discerning and stuff like that. You know, if it's a drug addict or an alcoholic, and I agree with that. A person who you know who, who may take the money and do foolish things with it rather than going and get themselves something to eat, and you feel it. Now, this is a testament to your own self. You're thinking beyond their thinking. Let's let you know that you're, you're a righteous person because you're saying, look, I want to get you this money so you can get something to eat. I want to help you out. But you know what? I'm a little scared that I don't even trust you doing it. Not that I don't like you, that I don't love you. I don't trust you. I'd rather see you go get a sandwich. Let's go sit down to the place and get something to eat rather than me give you this $50 and you go spend it on some more uh, whatever you get to keep yourself down. And so that's a righteous deed. And so that was one of the examples that the uh, one of the writers used. That, that we do righteous things. And so that's what I believe John is saying. I don't believe he's saying that we don't sin because we know we mess up. But we also know that John told us that when we mess up, we can go to him and he cleans us. He cleanses us. He says, he that uh, committed sin is of the devil. And so the world does devilish things. It's wicked. They do wicked things. From, uh, from the beginning, for the devil sinned from the beginning and we we all understand that maybe there's somebody on the line tonight who don't understand why you 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 know you're trying to do good but evil things is always there with you it's because there's two powers in this world and there are two strong spiritual powers in this world one is good which is jesus christ god the holy spirit and everything that's righteous about god and the other thing is the devil and let us not get it twisted if you're either for God or you're for the devil. And so when you're for the devil, maybe there's somebody out there right now now who's uh, who's lost and, and they're, they're wondering why they keep doing bad things when they want to do good things. That's because the devil has strong influence in all of our lives. And the system is the system that's wicked and it's evil and he wants to destroy you. So when you try to do good, if you don't have the spirit of God in you, if you don't have Christ in you, if he's not your advocate, if he's not basically, even before your advocate, if he's not your savior, you don't even really have the power to overcome some of the things that the devil's doing to you. And so you just keep sinning because it's your nature and the system that are, we're all in, this wicked system helps us. And so it says the devil from the beginning. And that let's let us let's understand names and words and all that mean important things. That's why he's called the Antichrist. Christ came to be our savior. So if Christ came to be our savior and to save us, then what does anti mean? Anti, the, 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 the prefix in, in the uh, language means against, anti-slavery, where people were against slavery and there was people who want slavery. So if he's the antichrist, he wants to do the opposite thing of what the Christ wants to do. Christ wants to love us. God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So John wants us to know this. And then he says, um, uh, for this purpose, the son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil, once again, the world, the world system. And then as we talked the last time in uh, chapter two, I believe it was, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride, those are the worldly things. You know, I'm the top dog. I got the most. I got the best. I'm this. I'm that. But I, I can keep on going. If somebody would... Uh, Read 9, 10, and 11. Time is getting away from us. 9, 10, and 11. Yes, whoever, sir. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For well, this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Mm -hmm. Amen. To? Amen. Uh, that's that's good. Um, 
Whoever is born of God does not uh, uh, commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Now, this is very, very good. And, and I love this when, when I read about this. He says, uh, it, because God's seed remains in you. Remember, he talked about the, the soil, the sower, sowing good seed. He sowed some seed, rocky ground, small good ground, and it, it was fertile ground. Well, because his seed remains in you, you don't practice a lifestyle of sin, practicing sin. That's what John was trying to manifest us. Not that we don't sin. He says, you don't go around thinking of, of how to sin, how to do bad things. We don't, we don't do that. We don't practice wickedness. And so because Christ's seed remains in you, see, for his seed remaineth in him. Contrast. Remember I told you it's contrast. Whoever is born of God does not sin. So there's either God or the devil for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So you, you, your spirit. That's why they, uh, I like what Tony story always says. He says, speak life. If you ever see Tony story, if, if, if those of you who know him, he's a brother from coastal area. Most of you, he sings. I think him and his, they have beautiful voices. He's always speaking. When you talk to Tony story, say, speak life and live brother, speak life and live. And, 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 and the word of God says you have to encourage yourself. You have to pray for yourself. You have to lay hands on yourself. You have to use the, allow the spirit to let you to know that you are born of him. And so we do things to help others, not to tear others down. We're children of God. God is neither he that loveth not his brother. See, he's not, he, the world don't like you. You know, like I said, they don't care about you. They tear you down, beat you down. And a lot of us, I know for me, it, it, you know, I look at jobs. Jobs don't care about people now anymore. You know, they, they, they just don't. They'll tear you down. If you if you don't do what they want anymore. I, I was shocked, but I heard it for myself. On my job one day, uh, I, I actually heard somebody from uh, HR tell somebody, you don't like it? See ya. See ya. You can uh, even see it in, in a lot of the aspects of life now. You know, if, uh, if you don't like the way this doctor's treating you, it's good to get another opinion or go somewhere and get another opinion. That's smart. But you will find sometimes that you go two to three doctors and they'll tell you, oh, well, you know, if you don't like us, go somewhere else. If you don't like the way we treat you, go somewhere else. Used to be doctors took pride in the Hippocratic Oath and that they, their job was to, to heal you, to help you get better. Nowadays, it's about this. That's a system. It's a worldly system. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should, what? Love one another. And that's plain and simple. John's message doesn't change. Now, he's contrasting again. He's contrasting. He showed you what, what, what we are, who we are, who, who it is that, that we're, that's in us, how we, how we are able to... Uh, be who we are and now he goes into this uh, another contrast he goes into it in verse 12 i'm gonna read verse 12 he says not as cain verse 12 not as cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteousness and so you see the world doesn't like you it didn't like him remember he said in the beginning of this chapter he said it didn't like him so they're not gonna like you um uh, they're not going to like you saying, oh, well, I, I, I do this and this is what the church does. Oh, we don't do that. We don't treat our children like that. We don't raise our kids like that. We don't believe in uh, that. We believe that Jesus Christ died for all of our sins. Oh, get out of here. There you go with that stuff again. That's just the way it is. The world doesn't like him. They ain't going to like you. And, and then he uses that strong, that strong example, that contrast. See, he says, for we of love. We're not like what Cain did. Cain slew his brother, killed him. Why? Because he was jealous. He, he was in that worldly kind of attitude. Because why? His brother had a better sacrifice than him. And so he got jealous. How many times do we get jealous? And uh, this is, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but one, tonight I want to encourage Deacon Andrews because I talk to Deacon Andrews a lot of times and I don't want to go too far, but I want Deacon Andrews to understand that. Encourage yourself, brother. And, and a lot of times, only reason why I said it is because I hear a lot of people talk to me like that. And there's probably a lot more that's on this line that the same way i'm the same way 
I, I'm the same way. And, and what I mean is this, that we can't let the devil tear us down because that's his job. And he'll step in and he knows right when to step in and where to step in. And a lot of men, a lot of people have been destroyed because of jealousy and because of things that they feel like, well, I'm not good enough. Well, I, I, can't, I can't do that. And God wants you to know that, yes, you can. And that I'll leave it at that. He's able. So marvel not, my brother, verse uh, 13, if the world hates you. And I, I know that the people that I'm looking at, we understand that. But maybe there's somebody on this line who doesn't understand that. Or maybe they're a new believer. Or maybe you're a believer that's just, you know, a oh, new believer. Yeah. And, and, and now, you know, you, the, the friends that you used to have, they're not the same now. They, 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 they say, oh, you're a holy roller now. Oh, you can't do this now. Oh, you you following that godly stuff. Well, when you're a young believer, sometimes you don't want to open up your mouth or you don't want to say because you want to fit in. We're so used to being of the world system and doing what the world says and what the world calls fun. Now, I'm not saying that we can't have fun. We can't do things and all that, you know, but. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, a spirit thing where we become like the world or the world has its way and the, and, the, and the devil has his way. The Bible and some of the writers who um, that I read about this story about Cain and Abel, they just came flat out and just said Cain was of the devil, period. Now, it gets a little deep because I wrote, wrote uh, read where some writers talked about murderers and people who murdered, but we also know that the Bible goes into other areas and different things about murder and stuff like that but uh some some writers are adamant you know if you're a murderer you're just uh purely of the devil but there are different circumstances of things that happen with murder you know um like i said i i used to love brother jackson because brother jackson would talk about things i'll make it real short he would always tell me a thing or ask me he said what would you do if you was going by a bank at late at night and you were you you saw a silhouette of a shadow on the wall and you saw a man kneeling down near a safe and you saw another man standing up over him and he had a gun in his hand and he just had his, his hand down like that with a gun. He said, what does that mean? What would you assume or what would you say? Most people would say he's robbing the bank. He says, well, not necessarily. He says, how can you come to that conclusion? Maybe that guy was the night guard and he was not professional. And he was standing there having a conversation with the man and the gun was down and looked like he was robbing the bank. So there's different situations and circumstances, but this, this is not the time or the place. I just wanted to bring that out kind of. Um, verse 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Basically, it's like this. They shall know you by your fruits. The Bible also says that if we love one another, they will know that we are of him by this. And I believe that's John that also says this. By this will all men know that ye are of my, my disciples or you love me because you love your brother. We love one another. For us, the church, uh, especially at Pastown, um, like I said, we follow the scripture. We love each other. We do. I know just like any other family, there's squabbles just like any other family. That's true of any family. But for the main part, for the most part, if something or somebody at passed down has a need, only thing they have to do is make a phone call. And the brother and the sister here at Passed Town, they will be on their horse right that minute. If you need food, you need comfort, you need a ride, you need help getting something done, they're there. They are there. There's, I mean, for real. I'm not just saying it to be saying it. When it's demonstrated, people know it. People notice it. And so that's the thing that I believe John is wanting us to know. He says, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we have, we love the brother. And so and what he's saying is that your, 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 your uh, uh, bestowment, your spirit has been, it's in Christ. It's not a, uh, 
it's not a farce. It's not a it's not a bad thing. You're on the side of God. You love the Lord because you show that love. You, you show it by what you do. And because we love the brother, we he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. The world is headed for what? Death. It's not so much um, uh, dying, but it's spiritual. You're headed for a spiritual death. And so this is the little thing that a lot of us miss because uh, I can use an example here. I don't want to tell all my business. But one of the things that we're going through with little Jamal right now is that he'll do something bad. And he'll turn right around and go, well, what did I do? What did I do? And you've been there with your kids. You've, we've all raised kids here. And it's like, Lord, how can I get it through to him? So I, I, I try to pray, first of all. I try to teach him stories and tell him stories. And um, at times he gets it. But then, right, you know, after something happens again that he doesn't like, he 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 he'll he'll get upset, and then after he's done it, Mama, Papa, what did I do? What did I do? And so we find that he's a child, but there's people that are grown up that they are just of the world system. They're just wicked. Whereas with believers and at past time, we're we're not we're spoiled in a way, but we're following the word of God, and so that's why for us it's natural. It's natural. And so when we see other people, it's natural for us. Brother needs help. I'm going to try helping the best I can. There's other people who don't do that. See, now, just like in verse 14, he says, whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know not. And ye and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Does it mean you go out and murder somebody? It could possibly mean that. But I believe what John is saying that in our spirits, we kill people every day. We, we murder people because of our morals. Somebody needs help. And you know what? I'm not helping him. You know, by helping me. Why should I help him? That's the world system. A believer. He'll say, you know what? I might not have all the groceries I need for my family. But you know what? That guy's a little bit worse off than I am. And you know what? He got kids too. I'm going to break him off half of what I got. And I'm just going to go and give him some of what I got and make sure he has some food. Morally, not just spiritually, but morally, the world is wicked. You know that statement, only the strong survive? They live by that. The world lives by that. If you're weak, too bad. Christians, believers, we find somebody's down and out, what do we do? We surround them with love. We encourage them. We call them. We send them cards. If they need food, we feed them. That's not like the world. We're morally murdering each other. And in America, oh my God, we 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 murder people just just by thinking. I hope they I hope they die. Did me wrong. Hope they get it back. And so that's what I believe. This, but what he's talking about, he's talking about morally. And so Cain morally, you know, he he slain his brother. He he was so jealous. He just killed him because he was jealous of him. So hereby, verse 16, hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. That's pretty much self-explanatory. And I think at Pastown, we have some people that, that, that take that to heart. I believe most of the people take that to heart. Now, I'm not saying we're going to go out here and take a bullet and <laughs> all that. No, we, let's keep it real. I, you know, I'm not crazy. I mean, not to, but. Getting back to the point where I said uh, breaking off bread for a brother. We've all been to a place or maybe been to a place where 
somebody needed food and, and we just barely had enough food on our table. But we went on and did what we had to do. And some of us might even have a story where when we did that, God blessed us because we stepped out on faith. So faith is a part of it, too. It's always in there in the mix. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. So we understand that. That greater love had no man than he that lay down his life for a friend. So we understand that morally we'll sacrifice so that somebody else will have. We've all done it for our kids. Go on to bed hungry. When, when the food, when the money ran out, we'd rather see our kids go to school, go to bed with a full stomach. And I'm grown up. You know, I can get something. I shoot. You know, I'll sacrifice and let that person have it. And then I'll I'll wait for the next round. See, morally, and that's where we differ our roles. We have values, we have Christian values, and the biggest value that we have is love. Why? Because the love is bestowed upon us. It was one thing that Deacon Lewis used to always say, and he used to pray it out, and he still prays, and he says, from heart to heart, the breast to breast. And when I think about that, I think about that, that love. Let God show, give us that love that flows from heart to heart and breast to breast. That's a, that's a strong statement, because when you look at it, Christ died for us, and he wants us to understand that we're supposed to love just like he loved us. Okay? But whoso hath this world's good, verse 17, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How can you say you love somebody, and somebody come to you, and they hungry, and need food? Now, maybe you don't have it, but you can say, look, I know brother uh brother dana brother dana sitting pretty down there he, he always keep food and brother dana he, you call him up give him a call him and his wife and sister sister they'll, they'll hook you up i don't have it right now that's love you go beyond you know and so these are the kind of things that let us know that we love christ because there's people in the world that say up oh, just like this 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 text said i don't care i ain't got it i'll say a prayer for you brother and that's another thing that, that one of the writers talked about. That's where you, you find your morals. Because, see, you have some Christians who, who, who might do that. So we have to pray for them also. But we also have to understand that it's because of him. It's because of him that you're different than your brother who won't do that. So we have to pray that they might come to that level and allow the spirit to work in them because see they're blinded and that was another see I'm, some of the stuff is coming back now because the, the 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 devil as we talked about earlier is able to attack christians and maybe blind them to certain things they may not have the full understanding they might they might not understand that god saved us and they're still they're still battling with that moral value because they still listen to the devil they still they still somewhat follow his 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 words and stuff and listen to him see whoso had his world's good and see if his brother have need and shut up his vows of compassion from him how dwelleth the love of god in him he's asking a question how can you say you love god and you watch your brother go hungry or you watch your brother go without food or clothing God, he doesn't really uh, have to, but he says, I'll give you food, clothing, and shelter. That's just what I do because I'm God. He said, I'll provide it for you. Sometimes we won't even give somebody a cold glass of water because they did something to us years ago. and We can't let it go. So morally, we murder that person. We murder them which death upon him and so john just wants us to see how powerful the spirit is and how powerful it is in our life see how dwelleth the love of god in him what does dwell mean dwell means dwell in you the holy spirit dwells in us my little children let us not love in word neither in tongue but in deed and in truth Maybe there's somebody out there, like I said, but all the people that I'm looking at on the screen, and it's probably not all of them, but I'm thinking for, for those or anybody who's out there who may not understand this, the people that are uh, 
are believers, they understand this that you can't just give lip service as a Christian. Now, and I'm not saying you have to be perfect. I'm not saying you're always going to be perfect and nobody perfect on this side. But the spirit in you is perfect. That's what makes you powerful, us powerful. And so even sinners in this world of evil people, they can detect or sense your spirit if you're a fake person. And especially if you call yourself a Christian and you uh, are only that in word, you, you have done nothing. They, they can look at nothing to see that you've done anything good for anybody else. But yet you, you know, you come to the church and you, you say all the, oh, hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, bless you. But then when it call, it's time to call upon you for service, even if it's just coming and picking up some trash around the church, they can't get you there. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. Believers, we understand that. And hereby, verse 19, we know that we are of the truth and shall assure and shall assure our hearts before him. And that's simply, that's what that's saying. That when we know that we do good deeds, that assures our hearts. Because God knows our hearts. Even when our hearts fails us, God knows, Jesus knows. What's the song where I say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. We have that assurance. Even though our hearts might fail us, even though the devil might attack us, you know, oh, you did that, but that, that don't mean nothing. Nah, just, you think you're good, you're nothing. Don't even worry. We have that assurance, John says, and hereby we know that we are of the truth. It's not a guess. You don't have to guess. And shall assure our hearts before him. It just simply means to encourage. It will encourage our hearts. And you know, a lot of times when you do good, even though it hurts you, you know, pretty much most of us know. I know it's happened to me, and I'm sure there's a lot I can look out and see the people that have encouraged me, even at past town. And sometimes I call out your name, but everybody that's on the screen tonight, you have encouraged me one way or another in my life along this Christian walk while I have been at past town. And some even before past town and things like that. But when you do that, the spirit lets you know that you're of him. And another way that you'll know is because people will, will let you know. Even the world, the devil, and his worldly system will let you know. I've used the example before that a lot of times you'll come in the room and people say, oh, oh we better stop that. Don't stop cussing. Don't, don't say, oh, I'm sorry. Don't take that lightly. That's the spirit that's in you. It, it's, it's letting you know that you're of him. I guess I'd have read everything. I went off on a tangent. I don't know if anybody else want to read. I, I just went straight crazy. I shouldn't say that. went straight off. But see, in verse 20, for if our heart condemn us, what? God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Simply means that God understands all things. He knoweth all things. He doeth all things well. And so when the devil tries to attack you and say, you're not, you're not a good person, just because you did that or you messed up. God knows all things and he knows our heart. I, I can't remember the scripture right now, but uh, it says that God knows the heart. He knows our hearts. Even when our hearts are, are, are letting us down, God will step in. Beloved, listen to what he says in 21. If our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God? And whosoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. In his sight. 
It's going up on 659. So it says, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. And so simply John is simply saying and taking us from the beginning to the end of this chapter to let us know that he put it in us, he gave it to us, he keeps us, and that if we have it, we don't continue sinning. And if we mess up, he's there for us. And that we can have confidence towards God that even when our heart fails us, that he's still keeping us. And that as we keep the commandments of God, and what is this commandment to do? Love him. Love your brother. Love him as you love yourself. And then he says, he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. And so when you dwell in God, that means it's like that vine in the branches. It's like a living, just a relationship where the communication is gone back and forth. Boom, 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 boom. He dwells in you and you dwell in him. And it's a relationship. It's a fellowship. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he hath given us and so that spirit that he's given us we can be confident in it that he won't leave us nor forsake us that that faith that we have and that love that we have will testify to not only us but to the world that we belong to him that's all i have amen amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Amen. brother. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. 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 So just be encouraged. Don't let the world, don't let the devil, don't let your heart. But this world is evil, man. And it'll tear you up, tear you down. God is able. God is able. Amen. 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 Hey, Steve, before we close out, uh, uh, I I talked to Nate today, but and Butcher spoke to it too. Um, Reverend Allen is going to be going to hospice on Monday. They said he, you know, he's not he's, hospice. He's not um he's not doing well down at the, down at the rehab. The power back down there, so he's not eating. And things so Monk, they're supposed to talk to his doctors tomorrow, and uh, they're gonna be releasing him from power back on Monday. But he's, he's going to the hospital, so keep him in your prayers, man. Amen, amen, amen. 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 yes, amen. thank you. On Monday, okay. Well, if it's all right, can I just close it out with a prayer? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah I just want to say it before you close it out, okay. Let us, let us pray. Father God, we come to you now in, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We come now, first of all, rejoicing for your word and for the Bible study and thanking you for this day. Yes. But God, we right now, we want to lift up those who we love dearly, which is all of us, our brothers and sisters, but Specifically, God, we lift up the name of Norman Allen. Yes, Lord. One who has served you and walked with you, God. And he's been our friend, our confidant, and our buddy. Mm -hmm. Right now, Lord, he's going through a stage of his life that we, we can't do anything about. And so we lift him up to you. We lift up everything yes, to Lord. you that that's going on from this point on. And we thank you that Dick and Lewis shared this with us, God. Mm -hmm. We ask that you would touch Nay and Rhonda, God, in a special way. For we mm -hmm. realize that they're going through something right now that is a dark, a dark, cloudy time. Mm -hmm. Give them the strength, God. Even Please. Nicole, Nikki, God, bless her and all of that family. We ask God that you continue to touch those who have lost loved ones and gone through a time now on that slippery slope as they continue yes, to move through that, that day of missing that one who was once with them, with us. Father, have your way. Yes, Bless yes. the doctors and, and the hospice time that Reverend Allen has. 
Yes. Uh, allow all of the medication that would, might be given to him, God, that it do the right thing. Get that house of peace. But that place that he's mm -hmm. going to be a peace, oh God, mm -hmm. that surpasses all understanding. We ask, ask most of all, God, that you bless that family as they yes. journey down through this place that they haven't been before. Mm -hmm. One that they'll probably never see again. But God, we ask that you give them the strength mm -hmm. to endure this time. Yes, please. Thank you, God, for just being Thank the God you. that you are. Bless all of our families, our kids, our grandkids, and our great-grandkids, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Give us a good day. Touch our retirees, God. Yeah. Bless all of our, our young folk. And touch that young man who had to go to prison now because of an accident with a gun. Mm. Touch that family. Please, Give us please. all we need. Thank you, God. Give us a good night and a good rest of the week. And, and, and Father, continue to bless Past Town and all of our leadership. It's in mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Hi, Ann. Wow. How are you? Reverend Al.